Hello and welcome back to the world of psychology. Here is another experiment for you. Let's suppose you wanted to invest some of your hard-earned money and you say, well, last time it didn't work that well. I lost all the money, even though I really thought this casino thing would really work. So this time, maybe I should go for something more serious. Something serious like stocks, for example. And therefore you decide to see your bank counselor and he tells you, well, you can choose from six stocks. In my opinion, all these six stocks have exactly the same probability to be successful. So in the end, it's up to you. You can decide. Just rely on your gut feeling and choose the three stocks that you want to have. So make your decision now. Choose the three stocks that just feel best for you. You can also change your mind if you want. In the end, it's just all about what feels good. Made a decision? Well, I'd suppose that you chose these three stocks. At least I would suppose that I got two of them right. And one of the reasons why most of you chose these supposed stocks is the so-called mere exposure effect. So the three red colored stocks consist of letter combinations that are more frequent and that you probably have read in many other circumstances. Whereas the letter combination KCIM is rather rare and unfamiliar. And therefore, it doesn't feel that good. The mere exposure effect says the more often you see something, the better it gets processed by your brain and therefore it also feels a little bit better. And from an evolutionary point of view, this makes sense. Because if something is familiar, it's probably not dangerous. Whereas something that's new and unusual, like a fruit or even a person, well, let's be careful. We don't know enough about it. We don't know whether it's safe. So the mere exposure effect, and there have been numerous studies on this topic, explains a lot of everyday phenomena. For example, and you probably know this from your own experience, the first time you listen to a new pop song at the radio, you might think, well, <laughs> I don't know why this artist is so successful. This song is boring. But after listening three or four times more to this song, it suddenly feels no longer that bad. And maybe you might even say, well, yeah, it's, it's a good song. Of course, the mere exposure effect is also used in advertisement. We are repeatedly presented with one and the same brand and if we are in the supermarket and we have to decide do I take this brand or do I take the no-name product well guess what even though if we know it's probably produced in the same factory most people decide more often for the brand they were presented in the advertisement the brand they already know they are familiar with and of course the mere exposure effect is also used by politicians. Think of all the election posters. There is no real message on these posters. Only empty phrases. And nevertheless, they probably have a huge effect because if we are in the polling booth and we have only little political knowledge and all we see are different names, we probably decide for the name that somehow feels better. And the reason why it feels better, even though we sometimes don't remember that we have seen it on the election poster, the name that's better processed by our brain feels a little bit better and therefore it has some advantage. So a lot of interesting phenomena 
And we will cover all the studies about this topic in uh, upcoming episodes. So this was just a little preview. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment and see you next time.